Okay, guys, in this video, we're going to look at um, another technique on complex numbers, which is quite a common exam style question. Um, solving equations involving complex numbers by thinking about equating the real and imaginary parts. Okay. Um, first of all, just to be clear, like a few things. We know that i squared is equal to minus 1. This notation we may not have seen before. So we use the letter z to stand for a complex number. Okay. Now, we could say z is equal to x plus i, y. And in that form, it just means that that's your real part. That's your imaginary part. If we use this little star notation, that stands for the conjugate. Okay, and we've, we've spoken about conjugates previously, but remember the conjugate. If z was x plus i y, then the conjugate of z would be x minus i y. So all the conjugate does is the real part stays the same, and the imaginary part, we change the sign. So if it was positive, it would be negative. If it was negative, it would become positive. Okay? Um, this equating part, we will look at when we've done the example. Okay? Okay, so the first part of the example says, um, we know that z is just the general complex number, so we're going to say given z is equal to x plus i, y, um, find in terms of, now remember when it says in terms of in the exam star question, that just means you're going to have an x and a y. In terms of x and y, that means that x and y will be in our answer. And we just want to find the real and the imaginary parts of this. Okay? So what we need to start by doing is to realize that we can't do anything at the moment while there's a z in our equation. We need to think about z as the general complex number x plus i y minus z star. So that would become, I'll be careful here, okay? You, z, the conjugate of z is two separate things. And when you're subtracting, you need a bracket, okay? So z star is x minus i y okay very easy to miss a negative there without including that bracket because you're subtracting all of this thing which is all of this and um, so first step if we've got this expression in terms of z write it in its real and imaginary parts then we can be begin to group the real parts group the imaginary parts together okay so let's expand this out we would get x plus i y minus okay so what way are we gonna write this <laughs> to be honest I don't I've got a little bit of a bone to pick this I don't like the way they write i y you know like whenever we've been writing complex numbers the i bit we normally put at the end um but anyway it's just that, see the way we've got two i here so i is at the end here but then we've got i y there and i is at the front I think it's a little bit annoying personally but we can write it at the front or at the back I would normally write it at the back it's just because in the question it's put at the front. Um, anyway, so here we've got minus 2i times by x. I'm going to write this. When we multiply these two together, I'm going to write it as minus 2x. And I'm going to start to put the i at the end. Because that's just all the i does is it tells me it's the imaginary coefficient. Okay? Here, be careful. Minus 2i and i times y. When you times these together, we're going to get minus 2 y and then i times by i is going to be i squared okay just for consistency i'm going to put the i at the end okay that's the way i would normally write it and then we've got this which is minus x minus minus so that's going to become plus y times i okay let's group the real and imaginary tidy this bit up don't forget i squared is minus 1. So what have we got? We've got x minus 1. So that's going to become minus 2i times by minus 1. So that become plus 2i. Um, we've got minus x as well. Okay. Let's not do too much of them. So they're all my real parts, my imaginary parts. I've got yi plus yi, so that become plus 2 yi, and minus 2 xi. Okay, last thing, x minus x, that become plus 
to y. Not essential at this point, but I think very, very important, right? The question says, find the real and the imaginary parts. There's my real part there, because that's the real stuff. The imaginary part is the, is the bits of the i coefficient in. I would always write it like this, just so it's better. You'll see why when we do the next part of the question. There's my real part. There's my imaginary part. So I'm going to take a factor of i out of this, and it becomes 2y minus 2x. So that would be my real part. And my imaginary part would be 2y. I don't need the i, like the i just tells me it's the imaginary part. The real part is 2y, the imaginary part is 2y minus 2x. Okay? Okay, so part b then says, hence, find the complex number z, such that this here is equivalent to this. First time, maybe, that you've seen this. Okay, hence is exam speak for... You've already done some work out here, like you can use your previous answer to help you with this. Okay? Now if we look at what the left hand side of our equation is, that stuff there we know is the same as 2y plus 2y minus 2x i. So don't treat this like a brand new question. Like that stuff on the left hand side we've done some working out with. So we can look at the left hand side and say, well, that stuff there, when would that be the same as 10 times 2 plus i? Okay, so the first step is to write in the real and imaginary part and then look at what's on the right hand side. Now, looking at that equation, like it looks completely horrific, doesn't it? There's x's, there's y's, there's i's. You might think, Josh, how, how are we ever going to solve an equation that looks like this? There's just too much going on. Okay? Now, the technique in the title is called equating real and imaginary parts. Now, before we do this one, let's just pause for a second, right? Um, let's do a simple question. So, if I said to you 2 plus 3i, remember, an, an equal sign, don't forget, don't lose fact of the, 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 the real fact that this is that that equal sign means that this stuff here equals this stuff. In other words, that stuff is the same as that stuff. So if I said to you 2 plus 3i was the same as 2 plus bi, and I said, look, it, that's the same, equals, that stuff is the same as that. Hopefully you'll be able to look up both sides and say, well, obviously b must just be 3, mustn't it? And what you've really done there is you've done this technique, but just in a much more simpler way. Like you've just looked at the left hand side, you've looked at the right hand side and said, well, these must be the same. The imaginary part here must be the same as the imaginary part here. The real part here must be the same as the real part here. If they're going to be equal, they've got to be equal. That's all it means. Okay? So look at the stuff that we've got, and it's a little bit more complicated. I'm going to do a little bit of an expansion on the right hand side. And then use a colour maybe to help us visualise this. So if I look at both of these equations and I compare what's on the left and what's on the right, sorry, if I look at this equation, both of these, look at both sides, the real part on the left must be the same as the real part on the right. Now the real part is 2i. The real part on the right is 20. So we instantly, instead of having all this mess to look at, we've just picked out the real part and said they must be the same. We can also do that for the imaginary parts. Okay. So what's the imaginary part on the left? So the imaginary part is 2i minus 2x. I don't need to write the i here. Like you can, but you don't need to. Like this is the coefficients, this is how much of the imaginary bit is on the left and how much of the imaginary bit is on the right. It's just 10. So there's this much on the left, there's 10 on the right. Okay. Now what we end up with is some equations that we can solve. Sometimes we have to solve them simultaneously, but for this one we can just solve. We've got 2y equals 20, y equals 10, 
and then therefore y equals 10, so 20, 2 times y minus 2x equals 10. Rearrange this, subtract the 10 plus 2x, divide by 2. Okay, so we've got y equals 10, x equals 5. Have we answered the question? Hence, find the complex number z. So let's go back to answer. So therefore, what does z equal? x plus yi. So z would equal 5 plus 10 i. And that's our solution. Okay, example two. Yeah, very similar to the last one. Um, but we'll do another one. So first part says find in terms of x and y the real and imaginary parts of this. And obviously we're working with z. Z is our general complex number. Okay. We are going to write, first of all, x plus yi minus i. The conjugate with the x minus yi minus i. Um, we need to multiply this together. Now be careful because we've got three terms. You could group the imaginary bits together, but I think let's just expand this out and just be careful as we do it. So that would be x squared minus x yi minus x i plus x y i be very careful here minus times a plus so that will be minus y squared i squared y times by minus so minus y i squared minus i times x so minus x i minus times a minus so plus y i squared and minus times minus is a plus i squared okay so we've got a fair bit of tidy enough to do it haven't we you know that i squared is equal to minus one uh, let's see what we get so x squared uh, minus x y i minus x i plus x Y, they cancel, just noticed. Okay. Minus y squared and then i squared. So that's minus 1. So that becomes plus y squared. Minus 1. So that becomes plus y. Minus x i. Minus y. So they cancel. And minus 1. Okay, so where's the real part? Where's the imaginary part? So real part, x squared, y squared, minus 1. Imaginary part, minus xi, minus x squared, minus 2. xi. Okay. So find the terms of x and y, the real and imaginary part. So you can see your real part was this, your imaginary part was this. Alright. Okay, so part B, we've got this equation, which obviously there's an awful lot going on here. There's z's, there's i's, there's conjugates, there's brackets. Um, and it just says find the two possible values of z. But let's not panic. Let's think about what we've just done. So this left-hand side of the equation, we know we can write it in this real and imaginary form. So let's start by doing that. x squared plus y squared minus 1, minus 2x, i. And we're saying, when is that stuff on the left? The same as 24 minus 8i. You might want to highlight when it says two possible values, by the way. So like, don't forget that when we've done this work, hopefully we are going to get two possible values. If we don't, something might have gone wrong. Okay. So now let's look at the real part and the imaginary part. So compare what's on the left and what's on the right. So we can see that our real part would tell me on the left we've got x squared plus y squared minus 1 and that must be the same as the real part on the right which is 24. The imaginary parts we've got minus 2x as our imaginary part and we've got minus 8. Okay. 
So again, we've got a set of equations that we can solve. Now, fortunately, again, we can solve this just by dividing by minus 2. And we, know, we know straight away that x equals 4. We might get somewhere we have to solve them simultaneously, just like in GCSE. You know, if, if you've got one with x's and y's in and the other one with x's and y's in, you can solve them simultaneously. Um, but we'll probably see that with some of the questions that we'll do a bit later. But once we've just solved this straight away to get x equals 4, sub it into the other one to figure out what y is. So 4 squared plus y squared minus 1 equals 24. So we've got 16 minus 1, which would be 15. Subtract 15, so we get y squared equals 9. Two possible values, bit of a clue here. y squared equals 9. What's the square root? Plus and minus. Don't forget when you square root plus or minus. 3. Okay. So, let's answer the question. Z, don't forget, is x plus yi. So it would be 4 plus 3i. And it would be 4 minus 3i. Okay. Thanks, guys.